All right, everybody, another week. We are here again for a uh, new MBT webinar. Today, I've got two dear guests from MBT team. Uh, Asena, uh, MBT's content marketing director, uh, is with us today. Also, Esgi, uh, our growth marketing consultant, is uh, with us today. Uh, today, the main uh, idea is uh, discussing how to create content and marketing uh, strategies and plans. As, uh, especially in a ground-minded uh, uh, mindset. Uh, that's why uh, in the upcoming hour, uh, we are planning to do it within an hour, uh, I will be asking some questions. Uh, Asena will be answering the questions from the uh, content marketing department side, and Esgi will be uh, answering the questions uh, from a ground marketing consultant view, in other words, from the view of marketing managers and marketing directors, and uh, for some startups and scale-ups from the view of from the uh, founders. Uh, and uh, if uh, this is your first MBT webinar, uh, you can find our webinars in our new platform, Grow Marketing Hub. If you can visit Grow Marketing Hub, uh, maybe Esgi, you can put uh, the link uh, to the chat to all panelists, panelists and attendees, our new platform. And in the events section, you can see our past events and upcoming events there. In order to get in touch with MBT content, uh, uh, that place is the most uh, updated one. Okay, guys, if you are ready, I'm sharing my screen and let's dive to the content. We have got lots of things uh, to talk. Uh, before we start the content, I just want to give a brief description uh, about uh, the MBT team and MBT Works uh, because uh, I'm seeing the attendees from all over the world and also I'm seeing some familiar uh, names, uh, some uh, DMI students, some Grow Marketing Hub Premium members, some of MBT clients and stakeholders uh, and some uh, new names. That's why just to describe briefly what, what is MBT and what MBT is doing. MBT is a growth marketing studio. Uh, we are based in London uh, and Istanbul with the teams in London and Istanbul offices. We are operating in different fields. Uh, uh, we are also proud partners of some global giants like Digital Marketing Institute, SAP, HubSpot, and Google. Our, uh, within MBT, we have got uh, two different uh, kind of offerings. One of them is for the brands. In the brand side, we are offering uh, grow marketing services and consultancy. And for these services, uh, we are using our own platform, name is Marketing Machine. Uh, and for the brands, if they need uh, training in the digital or grow marketing area, we provide whether our new platform, Grow Marketing Hub, as a self service. Also in Turkey, in Turkish market, we are providing the Digital Marketing Institute courses and certifications. And lastly, for the brands who need more tailored uh, trainings, uh, we are delivering grow marketing boot camps uh, that was in class before the pandemic, but now we are also making it online with one-to-one -one live sessions. And for the individuals, uh, starting from the last year, uh, since we saw the demand uh, from the uh, B2C market about the grow marketing uh, workshops and uh, courses, uh, we also started to provide some products here. The grow marketing hub, uh, as I said earlier, for both brands and individuals as a SaaS service platform uh, that you can uh, subscribe, uh, sign up for free. And uh, with the, as a free member, you can uh, see a couple of uh, content. But if you upgrade to premium, then you can access all the contents there. Also in Turkish market, the Digital Marketing Institute courses and certifications. And lastly, uh, we will also deliver some uh, growth marketing boot camps for the B2C as well. We didn't announce the uh, dates yet, but the dates will be announced in a couple of weeks time. This is roughly MBT about what we are doing, uh, what type of products and services we are providing. And as, as I said earlier, uh, you can uh, be updated about our events from our uh, Grow Marketing Hub platforms in the events section. And you can also watch some of the previous events videos if they are available online. Uh, before moving forward to today's topic, I just want to show you a grow marketing loop. This is the loop uh, that MBT is following in the last five years while uh, serving the clients or while uh, developing uh, own brands and products. Uh, in, last week, uh, uh, in the last week's webinar, 
I covered the grow marketing checkup and grow marketing strategy development phases. Uh, and this week, we're going to talk about how you can create growth-driven content marketing plans. To give you a brief summary about this loop, this loop consists of four steps. The first step is uh, checkup, and it contains auditing three important stakeholders, which are, which are uh, our brand itself, the competitors, and the customers. And after collecting information from these three important stakeholders, it is time to create some strategy outputs. For us, the main strategy outputs are the personas, the ideal customers we create, the positioning statements that we create for the personas, and our growth funnels and the goals. And after creating this strategy uh, outputs, it is time to go to the market. And while we are going to the market, we have got six different type of plans and channels. Uh, today, the content marketing plans will be delivered by this trio, but in the upcoming webinar, we will also be covering the other channels as well. Okay, uh, in this lecture, uh, I'm, I'm still stuck with the lecture thing. In this webinar, it, it is like switching every, every week. Uh, I, was, uh, I was lecturing in the Bilge MBA. It was like lecturing. Then uh, I was giving workshop yesterday in an off sprint uh, accelerator. It was workshop, today it is webinar. That's why it is mixing every week. Okay, in today's webinar, uh, while creating a content marketing plan, I, 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 was, I, I will show you uh, how you can use the Grow Marketing Hub as well uh, for this one. But more importantly, I will be asking questions to Asena and Ezgi. Uh, Asena will be answering from a content marketing perspective and Ezgi will be answering as a marketing manager director perspective about the content marketing, uh, both uh, the strategy part and both the creation and distribution part. Okay, first of all, uh, before starting a content marketing plan, we should be uh, choosing a product or brand. This is an especially an important issue for the B2B companies because what we are witnessing is uh, some of the B2B companies, they have got an umbrella brand, then they've got several sub products or brands. Then while starting uh, creating a content marketing strategy in the first place, we should define for which brand or for which product this content marketing strategy will be created. The second part is the creating the persona or choosing a persona. Uh, even when you are using our Grow Marketing Hub platform, you uh, maybe already witnessed that. In order to create a plan, first you should choose a product, then you should choose a persona. And if you don't have a persona, then you should create some persona in order to uh, follow uh, the further steps. Okay, let's start at this point, uh, going to, the, to my guests about their opinion. Uh, why defining personas is important or uh, for example at MBT why this methodology didn't uh, proceed without choosing a persona why it is that important in the content creation part as we can start with you if it's okay, okay for you yeah sure. uh, well uh, actually content marketing is one of the most influential assets that we use in all stages of the growth funnel which attract engage commerce nurture close and you know retain and grow and I think the persona is it's compass, you know, persona is essential for all marketing activities, but the very foundation of uh, content marketing strategy lies in understanding and defining the personas. Uh, because at the end of the day, the purpose of content marketing is to reach your audience at the right macro moments uh, when they are out there searching for something connected to your product or service. Uh, but if you don't know who your audience will are in the first place, the whole structure collapses. And there's no way that you can reach out to your audience at the right time, at the right place. So you have to define your personas. You have to know your personas. And while defining them, you have to carefully search their geography, you know, demographics, platforms they use, devices they use, and their purchase behavior. And you need to understand their pain points, the goals, how they you know, feel and how they, what they feel actually. Only then you can tailor your content and your tone of voice to their specific needs and concerns. Only then you can create a, a relevant and personalized content for them. And coming to your you know, second question, um, actually brands are, generally they have multiple personas deal with and target, like we have in uh, MBT. 
Uh, that's why it's important to create uh, different content for uh, content plan for different personas. For example, uh, one of our clients uh, have a mobile app in the stores that supports the mental development of uh, children, and his personas uh, are parents and teachers at the same time, and both with different goals, challenges, and you know backgrounds and ch ch uh, channels they use to get their news and information are different. So we need to respond to their needs with different content styles and topics. And one content will have, I think, for parents for, uh, have more emotional tone, while the other will be more functional to resonate with them. And, uh, and, and if you are talking to them all the same, then it means you are saying nothing at all and you can really connect to them. So I think defining personals give a clear focus to content marketing and such focus if leveraged by a consistent approach enables a, a sustainable growth and generates higher return of investment. But if you, if, if content marketing lacks focus, I think then it will be a waste of resources and efforts. And I think this will be a real, real shame at the end of the day. Okay, thank you. Uh, this was a perspective from a marketing manager uh, uh, or marketing director. Uh, or a founder, if the founder is managing all the uh, marketing operations for a startup or scale-up. Okay, uh, how about the content marketing departments? Why uh, the persona is important for you, Asena? Uh, as Ezgi said, uh, the reason we define personas is that every persona has different pain points and goals, uh, and therefore uh, the reason for buying your brand will differ for them. So all our content uh, marketing activities will have to be done accordingly. Uh, I'll give you, usually they say one size doesn't fit all. It's exactly the uh, same thing here. Uh, here I'll give you an example from uh, one of our B2B clients. Uh, all my examples will be uh, about this client to have the uh, thing going. So it's an HR tech company uh, providing digital coaching uh, platform to enterprises. Uh, our first persona is here, the talent management director. So the goal of this persona is to provide their managers with uh, measurable, uh, reportable and tangible data that shows the effectiveness of any coaching program. Uh, so uh, to communicate with this persona, we have to polish the features uh, of our uh, coaching platform. We have to show them the features, the benefits of the platform. Uh, another persona uh, we, about the same, uh, exactly the same uh, platform is the C-level persona. Uh, in this case, it's a CHRO. Uh, this persona looks uh, at the issue from a wider, higher and more innovative perspective. So they're interested in where the HR industry is going. They are interested in, they, they need to define the vision of their company. Uh, so for this persona, we generate contents on the subjects of where the HR industry is going uh, uh, or they're interested in uh, future of work. We create content for leadership 4.0, you know, new trends and new topics uh, to, to attract their interest. Uh, and the last persona is the, uh, for this brand is the end users uh, of the platform. Their goals are to improve their own or their team's uh, careers to ensure engagement and motivation. So the contents will be within that scope. As you can see, we have one platform, three different personas, and we're talking uh, very different, you know, three, we're going uh, to them uh, very uh, different uh, contents. So even for the same product, we always uh, have to, you know, decide our personas and write uh, contents accordingly. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is all, uh, most of the time uh, in the workshops that I'm delivering, especially in the accelerators. Uh, there's a common questions coming from the uh, like the participants, the startup founders or, or the early employees. They are ask, they are telling a challenge, um, uh, underlining that they cannot uh, communicate uh, with uh, their audience in a clear way uh, that is already as uh, highlighted uh, it gives you clarity uh, before creating something uh, that by defining the personas but also uh, sometimes in most of the uh, especially b2b companies what i'm witnessing is uh, they are not uh, 
e, communicating enough value uh, while communicating it because they have got different values for different type of ideal customers in other words the personas as asana you suggested uh, for the b2b businesses uh, also for b2c it's relevant but most of the b2b businesses when they've got different personas and when they are having a challenge that they cannot describe their solution uh, uh, enough uh, or if they are not satisfied about that uh, i can give a hint that they should be checking their personas because that means that maybe they are talking to general or maybe uh, they are having so much features that will be relevant for some specific type of uh, customers. That's why, uh, thank you very much for uh, valuable inputs uh, for this point. It's a, it's a very important point to start with the personas. And while you are talking, uh, as you mentioned about a uh, mobile app, uh, it's a purely B2C business. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Asana, you mentioned about a, uh, B2B uh, uh, company, HR technology uh, company. And uh, of course, after choosing the persona, uh, it is time to uh, think about the content types. There are several different types of contents. But at the same time, uh, according to your business nature, being a B2B business or B2C business, also this is an important parameter as well. Here my question is, uh, does a content differ if it's written for a B2B or a B2C persona? And uh, what type of things you are taking into consideration? And uh, for example, while you are writing a B2C content, what is your mindset? Or while you are writing a B2B content, what's your mindset? Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't mind, let's start with Esgi again uh, at this point. Let's first listen to the uh, marketing director there. <laughs> then we will be talking with the content uh, head. Yeah. Uh, yes, I mean, it definitely differs for uh, B2B and B2C uh, businesses because we are talking about two different kind of businesses with different uh, objectives and target personals. So you need to create a content marketing strategy that makes sense and right for these businesses. Uh, I think first thing to consider is audience characteristics and ecosystem. You know, B2B and B2C personals have different mindsets and motives and needs. Ticket size are higher in B2B business, so B2B personals would invest a lot of time researching products or services, collecting you know, referrals, uh, conducting a rational analysis, and at the end of the day, they make more value uh, driven decisions. And the purchase decision involves many areas of the company, for big companies or even the small ones. That's why sales cycles are longer. Why B2C businesses and customers may be more inclined to make an impulse purchase, less rational one. So B2B and B2C personas, buyer journeys are really different. By the way, you know, buyer journey quickly is the process of, you know, customer goes through before purchasing a product or service. And it's usually uh, divided into four stages, awareness, consideration, decision and retention uh, processes, stages. For, uh, for example, for uh, B2B businesses, consideration stage is quite critical. And here you need to convert them into leads. So lead generation contents like white papers, use cases work best. And decision stage also requires a longer uh, time and ongoing assistance by, by the brand. So persuasive contents like webinars, demos, or testimonials also work here. For for B2C businesses, I think, for example, for a, a mobile application, it's quicker to bring in new customers. The real challenge here is to make them stay and you know, turn them into active and loyal users. Here, push notifications we see can be a real uh, game changer. You can segment your users like those who have not opened the app for the last five days and then send them a relevant and personalized push messages. And it's really effective. I mean, we're creating engagement scenarios and messages for one of our clients and the results are really promising and we're just uh, starting there. Um, another consideration when creating uh, contents for B2B and B2C, I think is the platform to use uh, for your content. You should create content where your audience is active to get the maximum uh, return. While B2B uh, customers are looking at you know, LinkedIn, Medium, industry publications or you know, webinars, B2C customers are consuming videos, podcasts. They are more active on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. So each platform supports uh, each type of content differently. 
So uh, it's critical to consider the advantages and limitations of using variety of content types and formats for, for different platform, platforms, I think. Thank you very much. It was very enlight uh, enlightening. Uh, Asena, how about you? Uh, I mean, whether a business is B2B or B2C, uh, we always go with the blog post mostly. Uh, they are the most common content types uh, we use uh, at, because it's the best way to generate organic traffic when we use the right keywords. And uh, videos and podcasts are also used for B2B and B2C, but uh, I will elaborate more on the contents uh, we use B2B uh, businesses. Uh, here, a very important content for B2B is the use case. Uh, you might also heard of it as success story or case study. Uh, use cases uh, basically allow you to explain the benefits of your brand or product uh, through a real experience you had with a customer. Uh, a use case tells the reader how they can utilize your product very clearly because it involves a customer problem or challenge how the customer overcame that challenge with your service or uh, product and the results. Uh, on the result part, we, use, we prefer to use numbers and percentages to show the real impact uh, of the service or the project. Uh, we also love using uh, case studies in our remarketing activities, which we show uh, to the people who visited our website before or filled out uh, landing page. Uh, and uh, also most of our uh, B2B clients uh, benefit from uh, our use cases when they're trying to close sales uh, or do upselling. So the use cases supports uh, these activities as well. Uh, and the second important uh, content type for B2B businesses is eBooks and white papers. Uh, these content types are quite similar and they cover a specific, uh, specific topic of your product. Uh, it's in details and they generally include a detailed analysis of the industry. And uh, they're a bit compared to other contents, they're a bit uh, ac like ac academic article, articles regarding the length and the language uh, we use. And they always offer solutions for a particular problem. So therefore, more technical personas uh, or uh, for people who want to have uh, more information about uh, some uh, problem or some product. Uh, and the third one is uh, infographics. Uh, infographics are also used in B2C as well. So this is also important for B2C businesses. Uh, these content types, uh, they briefly cover data on a particular subject, but with more visuals, less text. So there, there are graphics and numbers, you know, you can see in visual formats. Uh, so they're really easy to understand for the reader. You don't have to write in a wall of text to, to explain something. Uh, and uh, the other advantages of infographics, they are really uh, easy to be distributed, uh, even in your social medias or uh, by the third party publishers. Uh, their engagement rate or, uh, are quite uh, high in social media. And uh, you can utilize an infographic in many ways by breaking in them into parts and distributing it many times. So we love this in content marketing. Therefore, we use infographics uh, a lot when we want to just, you know, uh, promote something. It's very, you know, small, but uh, you can promote it everywhere and as much as you want. Uh, great. Uh, it's like I was taking notes when you are talking uh, to like uh, ask an upcoming question to you. It's really while I'm taking note that I understand that uh, God bless to all content writers because it's really having lots of parameters. Amen. Because while you <laughs> while, while okay. you are creating a content, yeah, there are channels. The channels characteristics like the social media is different. Your own website blog page is different. You have got a buyer journey that I have a question for this one. I will not go in depth, but uh, your persona will be in a different uh, stage in terms of the uh, buyer journey. Uh, being a B2B and B2C business is totally changing. Uh, for example, as you mentioned about the ticket sizes, this is very important. This is even important for the B2C as well. Because if you are selling an uh, expensive product, 
that is needed to be a high involvement from the persona. And high involvement means the sales cycle is uh, increasing because they cannot decide like that. And at this point, the content should be more repetitive, uh, should be uh, more in a well-designed way in order to lower the sales cycle. Also, we have got the content types itself. Uh, as Asana mentioned, infographing is a different type uh, from an ebook uh, for the end reader and for the, also the aim of the business to, uh, who are going to distribute. Uh, also, uh, the distribution aim is also very important. For example, uh, uh, Asana and I worked like three years ago in a project. Uh, it was a mobile app engagement company uh, and uh, we created a uh, infographic infographic was about uh, how people purchase through mobile devices like in what day what time from which uh, operating system and we got an exposure from very uh, uh, big publishers like emarketer.com econsultancy.com because the content was valuable and the content was very shareable uh, content. That's why uh, for a brand who wanna create content, for example, in just in this example, for exposure, they might go to the infographic, but if they want to educate the end user, they will be going to blog posts or articles and etc. Okay, thank you. Let's move forward to our next step. Uh, this is very popular. Uh, while you, uh, you are creating the content, also, there's a very important stakeholder at this point, the search engine optimization teams. And also what I'm seeing globally that now the content marketers are started to embrace lots of SEO practices as well, because they are getting know-how from the search engine optimization part. But also every time uh, they are having SEO teams, whether within the company or whether with an agency. How this process is going, it is like uh, for the participants, uh, that I'm seeing currently, uh, some of them can be working in an agency now, some of them can be working in a, a brand site, uh, some of them already experiencing these flows, but how it flows through the departments or through the teams, uh, where content marketers uh, come in place, where SEO guys come in place. Can you tell me a bit about this process with the SEO teams? Let's start with Ezgi again. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, one of the very first things we do when we are onboarding, onboarding a new client is a keyword research and we turn to our SEO teams uh, because we want to understand how visitors are finding their website and what they are typing to find the competitors. So tools like SEMrush and Google Analytics helps us in, in this area of research. And, and then after we work with uh, you know, the SEO, SEO teams, we pick the most relevant keywords that have high search volumes and those keywords become becomes the, uh, the core of our content strategy later on. I think at this point, I can also highlight the fact that there are two types of you know content, evergreen and topical uh, contents. Uh, evergreen contents have timeless topics. If you are, uh, like I said, if you are a digital coaching platform that enables uh, leadership development and generates culture, uh, company culture, uh, then your main topics are uh, uh, digital coaching and leadership development. Uh, now you can discover the related sub uh, topics that your potential customers are searching at your you know, target locations. And then you can create a piece of content that uh, serve their needs and answering their uh, challenges. And uh, I think these two topics uh, need to be the main part of your content st marketing strategy because this, you know, evergreen contents will always be relevant and valuable for your business and drives more traffic over the its lifespan. So at this stage, uh, SEO teams and the content, team, content teams are really going hand in hand and, you know, uh, creating the content strategy together. And when it comes to topical content, uh, it's really time sensitive uh, content and tied to particular moment of time. You know, social listening and Google Trends help you to discover a topic that, that is sparking the interest of your audience. Uh, and you can create a content based on that trend topic. I mean, in these scenarios, uh, actually account team and uh, content team are working really uh, close. And also we are, uh, turning for an advice for our, you know, client as well. Uh, when uh, 
As an example, one uh, black movie, movie Bandos Snatch, first I write on uh, Netflix, actually, uh, it was a, you know, instant hit and it was a uh, interactive movie about a young programmer. At that time, our client, a mobile app develop, uh, development company, was trying to attract software developers and needed a piece of employee branding content. And while brainstorming, you know, we figured out that we can, uh, we could take advantage of Bender Snatch and we create a content focusing on the you know, importance of uh, user experience and user insights while improving your, uh, iterating your digital uh, product. And it really resonated with our target audience. And actually it's, you know, made the company a cool place to work at. And it, but it made sense. Uh, we wrote it for a mobile app development company. We not for a digital uh, coaching platform. I think the relevancy is, is the key ingredient here. So uh, this is how you know all content content team, SEO teams, and account teams and the client you know working all together to create a really relevant, personalized, and informative and sometimes fun content to you know attract and reach their uh, audiences. Thank you very much. And this Netflix example is very interesting because uh, I've never thought that for a uh, software development company for an employer branding aim, creating a content that is uh, targeting a Netflix uh, uh, Netflix episode. Yeah, it's interesting. It's also a different angle that uh, the content marketers and growth marketers are looking uh, for from different angles. Okay, Asena, uh, you are uh, you have been a content marketer for life, let's say, and uh, you have worked with uh, different type of SEO teams, inside, outside, uh, as an agency, yeah, in, in every uh, shape. Uh, can you describe your uh, from your own experiences? How is it going with the content marketers and SEO teams? In the content uh, marketing departments, especially. Yeah, and, and I mean, uh, at MBT, our process uh, changes. We can decide a topic uh, either uh, from either considering uh, clients' requests uh, or uh, considering a request from our SEO and performance teams. By the way, they also work together, uh, or we de we decide a topic in the content department. Uh, before we write a content, there are certain points we look at. Uh, this can be like monitoring the industry trends and news. Uh, we determine the trending topics, uh, whether it comes from our clients or from our performance and SEO teams, uh, or we use uh, tools such as SEMrush and Google Trends and con uh, shape our content accordingly. Uh, for example, last year, uh, it was a request from our client. Uh, we wrote a blog post about leadership for 4.0 because this uh, keyword was really a, a new keyword, a buzzing keyword uh, in the HR uh, industry. So we were actually to be, we were the one of the first companies uh, who wrote uh, something about this and uh, we positioned uh, very early in this keyword. And this blog post is still one of the most traffic generated content on our website still. Uh, and again, uh, from our content department, we, did a, we detected that the problems uh, of women in the workplace were discussed a lot, uh, close to Women's Day, uh, obviously. And we have provided quickly uh, content uh, for the client and we really uh, get a good traffic to the website. And, uh, we also achieved very good engagement on social media uh, with this content. Uh, in this process, uh, we look at the search volumes uh, of the keywords with our SEO team. We always uh, uh, work with our SEO team. Uh, they either give us keywords uh, because as uh, you cannot, sometimes you cannot use the terminology. You cannot just you know, go with digital coaching in uh, our example. You have to uh, know the keywords that uh, your visitors or your potential customers are searching for. So we always uh, get support from SEO and performance teams. Uh, we also examine what the competitors wrote in these keywords so we can also position in those important keywords. Uh, also, our SEO team monitors what's uh, being talked on social media and uh, internet forums such as Quora and Reddit 
so we can shape our uh, content accordingly again. And uh, in addition, if our clients have this information, we always review the frequently asked questions or surveys and uh, produce our content really related to the solution of uh, the questions asked. So we have a lot of, you know, methods uh, to, to shape a content uh, and we always work with our SEO and performance teams in this regard. Uh, thank you guys. Yes, uh, as I can understand, uh, the process is very hand in hand. It is like uh, sometimes on and off, both of the, both of the teams are coming. But it was interesting because, uh, according to my observations in the uh, in the last uh, year and this year especially, I started to see some conflicts <clears throat> in the brands uh, and in the teams about choosing the SEO or choosing the narrative. This is a very interesting topic because some brands are uh, going towards to more SEO oriented contents. That means creating the content, uh, relying on the most uh, volumes and uh, uh, how people search it. But some brands are going towards to the narrative side and they are, not, uh, they are like uh, trying to uh, build the narrative then uh, refurbished it according to the SEO. I cannot say this one right or this one right. Okay, Asena, you can say, please. I can say, I mean, not which one is right, but Google algorithms or, you know, SEO uh, algorithms change and they don't only, uh, they don't only, you don't only rely on the keywords itself. So you have to have a good narrative as well. The last uh, algorithms were according to that. So in our blog post, what we do is we, of course, uh, take into consideration these keywords. Uh, our SEO scores are really high, but sometimes we avoid using some keywords too much, even it's, uh, you know, gets the SEO scores down. But uh, we really want uh, people to read the article because, uh, you know, staying in the uh, website, web page also affects the algorithm. So if a person just leaves your page, even you, you get traffic, if they the bounce rate is high, it doesn't matter even if you use all the SEO keywords. So it's really important to keep the balance. And what we do in uh, at MBT, we always keep balance. We always uh, consider the SEO keywords, but we always put the uh, blog on a very good narrative, you know, in a readable, readable content. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I totally agree. Uh, I'm also thinking by myself, if I have to choose one, I will go with the narrative as well. Uh, because, uh, yeah, the balance is very important. But I've seen in the uh, like last couple of years, I've seen very good examples about people are creating uh, very good narratives, even in medium, uh, and exposing like millions of readers there with just one blog post yeah, it's not easy it's not for everyone but that means that if you have a good narrative you are reaching the uh, your uh, ideal customers uh, but of course uh, while you are uh, building a narrative if this narrative is not fitting how people search the search engines that means you are uh, losing a potential of uh, organic traffic which is the key uh, sustainable growth and also, uh, at this point, I can also share one of my observations as well. Uh, till that uh, point of the webinar, we already has got 40 minutes uh, and 20 minutes left. I should fasten the belt, uh, by the way. Uh, I'm seeing that the content marketers are evolving towards that the T-shaped marketer. What, what, uh, it means that they, they are starting to get to know the SEO. Also, they are starting to get to know the PPC, the engagement, everything. That's why from uh, the ones, uh, the participants who are listening this webinar now or will listen afterwards, I can recommend that uh, the content marketer is a good career opportunity because now the content marketers are uh, started to embrace all the digital marketing topics and they are uh, automatically becoming the growth marketers or growth minded marketers. That's why I just want to take this note and all the things that Asena and Ezgi uh, told so far, uh, it is like touching uh, every point uh, from the marketing side. That's why I can say that it's, it will be a good opportunity 
for the ones who want to change their career the content marketing is a content marketing being a content marketer is a uh, very uh, let's say a promising role okay now my favorite topic the growth funnel uh, this is important because while we're talking about the persona okay we define the personas we know the ideal customers but some of our customers can be in the beginning of their Uh, searches or in the decision making process but some of them can be at the point to decide something and when you switch it to content marketing uh, creating a strategy or writing a content how do you use this uh, buyer journey stages while creating the content uh, let's start with uh, Ezgi again uh, at yeah. this point <laughs> as usual <laughs> let's listen the Uh, marketing uh, director first, then go towards the content marketer. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned earlier, content marketing features uh, in all areas of growth funnel, uh, and it helps you to reach and attract your target audience, convert them from anonymous visitors into leads, and nurture them into customers, and retain your existing customers and turn them into loyal fans. Uh, what important here, I think, uh, you know, the matching the benefits of content marketing uh, to each funnel. Then it's possible to create a content that is aligned with your goal. I mean, do you want to bring more visitors to your re- website or do you want to increase your conversions or is it about driving, you know, a repeat, repeat sales? Uh, whatever the case is, I think you always have to think in terms of growth funnels and each stage, uh, which persons you are targeting. Uh, yes, there are four growth areas, which and attract, uh, first one. Uh, this is the part where you build, uh, try to build brand awareness and attract your target person. Here you um, need to communicate with customers at the awareness stage in their buyer's journey. You have to help them, you have to create a content that helps them find you when they are searching for answers. Uh, in the second stage, engage and convert uh, funnel, here you need to create a content for audience who are at the uh, uh, consideration stage. They are considering all of their options, uh, including your product or service. And aim is here uh, to drive you know, audience engagement and increase leads and conversions. Here you have to create some lead generation uh, contents. And the nurture and close funnel, uh, here you, your leads are at you know, decision-making stage. They are ready to make a de- decision. Maybe you are this close to uh, you know, close the deal. And you need contact uh, help you convert your leads into customers. You have to facilitate that process. And um, retaining a growth uh, funnel, I mean, here it's all about, I think, uh, making your customers champions for your brand and securing their uh, loyalty. I think this part is usually overlooked, but I think it's quite critical because if the churn rates are high, then it means you are you have a losing business. Uh, so you need to hear your uh, customers' feedback and iterate uh, while uh, you know reminding them why they chose you in the first place with the help of uh, content marketing. And content marketing has some critical Uh, part plays a critical part here. Uh, so there is a variety of content, like I say, and content types and formats. Some works best for certain stages, uh, and I think Asana will elaborate more on the content types that we create each stage. Uh, it's important to uh, map uh, the right content to the right uh, funnel and to the right person at the end of the day. Yeah, I think map is, a, is the exact word there. If you uh, map the buyer journey stages with the content that you have, that will probably uh, will get the higher performance. Uh, Asena, uh, what type of contents you are taking into consideration? Or is there like the content is differing according to the stages? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, at the brand awareness stage, uh, as, as you said, uh, the potential customer is not fully aware of uh, what the solution to their problem is. Uh, so they're doing a lot of research to identify and solve the problem. So it's really important that uh, they meet your right content uh, at this point. Uh, the main purpose of the content at this stage should be providing a benefit. 
So if we show our products uh, details or product features, this content will be really irrelevant for this uh, for uh, the person at the awareness stage, because they won't understand what you're talking about. They they haven't just you know defined their own problem. Uh, another important point is that uh, we should also avoid using industry terminology. Uh, since the target customer uh, will not be again aware of that. For example, um, an HR director will probably be doing uh, their research with uh, something in the lines and how can I improve employee engagement at larger scales. Uh, they will use this keyword instead of just writing digital coaching. So you have to be aware of what uh, they're uh, searching for. Uh, at this point, we should focus on uh, how-to contents. Uh, these contents provide a benefit to the persona and create engagement. Uh, these contents can be like how-to blog posts and videos, uh, reports, ebooks, expert contents that will be uh, educational contents that will be an, on the educational side uh, for this uh, stage. Uh, at the conversion stage, uh, the persona is a little bit aware of uh, their problem. Uh, so the contents we generate should focus on transforming a potential customer to an actual customer. Uh, the contents types here uh, can be again how to contents for solving a specific problem in this case. Uh, and uh, we usually use persuasive contents, which are comparison contents or videos trustworthy content such as use cases. Also, we use call to actions, uh, which we want uh, the persona to you know, apply for like a free demo. We offer a free demo, free trial account, you know, short term discount, uh, so that it will speed up the decision making pro process. Uh, uh, another note, we should communicate uh, at this stage with long tail keywords. Uh, this means these keywords that have low search volumes but high conversion rates. Uh, for example, instead of pos positioning in the mentorship uh, keyword, which also can be a very competitive keyword, we can generate more engagement and a higher conversion from a uh, measurable mentorship uh, program for enterprises, for example. And we face the target audience exactly looking for this uh, problem, this solution. Uh, and for the retention state, like Esgi said, uh, usually companies focus on traffic generation and brand awareness more. But a content strategy should be designed not only to gain new customers, but also increase the satisfaction of their existing customers. Turn these customers into loyal customers or turn them even uh, in brand to brand ambassadors. So at this point, we can uh, give our customers how uh, they can utilize our product better uh, with content such as guides, tutorials, demos, webinars, podcasts, and use cases. Uh, and we can also produce content, uh, content based on uh, customer behavior like automated email marketing scenarios and uh, some stuff like that. So we should never oversee uh, retention, as, as, as we said. Uh, thank you, guys. It was really, really uh, well-defined, all the stages, all the content types. I take notes, but I, I have nothing to add. Uh, just, uh, just one uh, thing to underline. Uh, also, I have witnessed that lots of companies are forgetting the uh, content for the retention stage. This is important, especially I can give an example of HubSpot there. If you go uh, and search about how to use a HubSpot feature, HubSpot has got a subdomain for each knowledge.hubspot.com and you can see how you can uh, create automation scenarios. You can see it by the screenshots of the platform. This is very important because once uh, your current users are uh, dissatisfied, and if they cannot find a relevant content online to solve their problem, it might create a negative zero moment of truth. And that will be a, like a digital bomb for the upcoming new potential customers. All right. Uh, this was like uh, the, my main questions about 
the creating the uh, content, uh, all the like major stages, but also this content creation uh, is a uh, process that is like uh, creating the calendars, then managing it, iterating it, sometime changing it. Uh, how, uh, I want to uh, hear about the details about this iteration, like creating a content calendar and iteration with the other departments. Uh, let's start with you, uh, and, uh, Asena, at this point, because you are mostly uh, getting briefs from the consultants or from the brands itself, and you are creating and managing the content calendars. How is the process there? Uh, we are a content department. We are usually involved in the uh, content, you know, plans uh, with uh, either account teams or the brand itself. So, uh, for the B two for the B two B companies and the HR tech company I mentioned, we have a six month content plan uh, that we set uh, just a general framework. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, for example, we uh, said, uh, okay, in this during this six months, we will uh, write one news case a month, one ebook in every three months, four blog blog posts a month, uh, and we predefine the topics basically. Uh, then we make our plans on monthly basis. Uh, these are in more in detail, uh, and we determine their titles, target keywords, and persona. And also we work with uh, our uh, account departments and, uh, you know, always uh, do the monthly plans with them. Uh, while making the monthly plans, we sometimes make iterations uh, depending on the industry trends or keywords, as I uh, explained before, based on a well-performed content. Here, our performance team sometimes tells us, okay, this uh, content is really well-performing. So you might want to create another content, you know, along those lines. And we always take uh, these kind of things into consideration as well. Uh, regarding to social media plans, we do our plans monthly, but uh, we iterate them weekly and sometimes during the week too, uh, depending on the, uh, you know, the thing we will post. But we are always, uh, again, working with our performance team and account teams when we're creating our uh, plans, content plans. Okay, as far as I understand, uh, in the iteration part, even the content marketers are making the plans, but there are other parties like the performance team getting the metrics and also the account team, in other words, the marketing managers who are running the whole strategy. Uh, then uh, let's ask SG at this point, uh, what type of metrics you are looking? Because I think that this iteration is towards uh, to the metrics, uh, like according to performance of the uh upcoming contents or the past contents uh if you have to choose three top, uh, let's say three metrics three important metrics what would they be in terms of the content marketing strategy and plans um actually uh, the key metrics are based on you know your objectives so the first step i think to set a content marketing goals then you can determine the you know most important metrics for your content marketing goals and align them for uh, related stages of the funnel. And then, you know, again, funnel comes into play. And for, I, I would say for event stage, where right, you try to reach and attract your audience, uh, organic traffic, bounce rates, and average time on content pages are quite uh, important. Uh, for consideration stage, where you try to engage and convert your audience, you should look at total engagement, you know, newsletter sign up, uh, subscription a conversion rate from your organic visitors uh, and for decision stage where you try to nurture and close your leads you should monitor conversion lead quality from your organic visitors content base lead quality and such and in the retention stage uh, you should you know when you are trying to retain and grow your uh, customer base you should um, look at net promoter scores a customer lifetime value and customer retention rate. I mean, all works uh, when you look at it at the growth funnel uh, methodology and, uh, and according to your, again, goals. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's really important. I also want to highlight it. Uh, a content, uh, any type of content that is planned should be linked directly to a goal. And this goal should be linked to a problem 
or an opportunity. It is like instead of let's create a blog post or instead of let's create a use case, then you look at the funnel, you see that, okay, there's a lead nurturing problem for this company. How we can solve this problem? Let's create some use cases and email these use cases to the ones who are in the nurturing process. This should be the uh, like uh, flow instead of like ad hoc, uh, making it more data uh, driven. Uh, thank you very much. It is. Uh, it was my all of my questions, and it was all uh, answered uh, very well uh, from uh, you guys. And uh, if you have any questions, the participants, you can use the Q and A section to ask your questions. In the meantime, if you would like to follow MBT, and if you are not following yet, uh, you can find us in uh, nearly all the social media platforms. We are using actively our LinkedIn, Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube accounts. Uh, and we are sharing information about our upcoming events in all, all, all our uh, social media uh, platforms. Uh, I can announce that now we're going to start a new webinar uh, episode. Uh, it will start in one or two weeks time. At this webinar episode, uh, we will announce the name and the structure uh, soon. Uh, but we will be having uh, professionals from different sectors and we will be talking about their growth journeys or the key drivers of growth in their industries. It will be much more industrial-based uh, type of contents. As I said, when they will be ready to announce, we will be announcing through our uh, social media channels. Okay, guys, uh, I think we, are, we don't have any question. Uh, you already covered all the uh, stages, uh, I think. Thank you very much. It was very, uh, it was an honor to have you in, in this webinar. You started them in Turkish. Uh, we are now switching to uh, English for a more global audience. Uh, and I really like the energy of this trio. I think we will be structuring more webinars. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, if it's okay for you guys as well. <laughs> Because I, I'm seeing that we are also getting used to this webinar thing. It is, it's kind of addiction. Uh, since the lockdown, uh, it's like every week I'm having a, at least one webinar. Sometimes it is like three, four. And if I don't have one webinar in a week, then I will be, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I, I will call you and make a webinar, uh, like an ad hoc webinar. Okay, again, thank you very much, Asena. Thank you very much, thank Ezgi. You. Uh, and uh, let's uh, say thank you for all the attendees. Uh, see you in our next webinar. Uh, till that time, ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.